Welcome back to the Perlworks channel. My name is John, and that's my bike. In my last video, I showed how I planned on making large diameter dowels for some upcoming projects. This is one of those projects. I initially intended for it to be a coffee table, but I wanted to get the whole project out of the single cherry board I had. It was a 6 quarter board about 14 inches wide and 9 feet long, which is a big board no doubt, but I was only able to get a bench out of it. On paper, this is a pretty simple build. There's a top, 4 legs, and 2 leg supports. In reality, there are some quirks to the design, mainly with the leg joints. This project is a little practice run for my next project, which will be a low back chair of a similar aesthetic. I want to work out any kinks in the process so that I don't waste any time on the chair. I'm starting with the typical milling processes at the joiner, planer, and drum sander. I take the piece down to width of the table saw, and I use my track saw to cut the piece to length. I'll be adding some curves to the ends so the burnt end isn't a big deal. I initially planned for these leg joints to be a modified version of a Maloof joint. There are some difficulties in mimicking the joint with dowels because this joint won't be sculpted afterwards. Instead I want to reinforce each leg with a long dowel. To start I created a template which I'll use to route the recesses in the bench top. The legs will be 2.5 inches in diameter, so I used a 2.5 inch Forstner bit and slowed my drill press way down. I used the jigsaw to rough cut the recess and then cleaned it up with a flush trim bit in my template. There is a good chance of blowing out part of this recess, so at the end I make sure to do some small climb cuts. These aren't inherently safe, but they are a good way to combat the issue at hand. Another way would be to attach some sacrificial material to the board. I drilled the leg blanks for the reinforcing dowels before turning them. I think I figured out a way to drill two holes on a dowel that are perpendicular to each other, so I might skip this step next time. Anytime you see me drilling a hole by hand with a drill is a huge potential source of error, and it's something I need to work around in the future. I think a larger drill press and some better drill guides will help. After getting the blanks all ready, I can turn them in the shop made jig. I really appreciate all of the helpful comments and suggestions I've received from my dowel jig video. As you can see, I very crudely mounted a corded drill to my bench so that I can focus on moving the router. This Ryobi drill is pretty neat because it has a trigger lock and a variable speed dial on the trigger. This made it super easy to dial in a good speed. I also figured out that there really isn't a need to tap the hole in the end of the blank. Simply driving the bolt into the blank will thread itself with better results. I used a 20 thou dado shim to continually sneak up on the correct diameter. An off cut from my recess template came in handy for checking my progress. At this point I found it more handy to measure with this than to measure the actual diameter. As I got closer and closer I started taking smaller passes. Once I got the final diameter I could use the plunge stops for the next dowel without much worry. There's a very slight taper in the dowels from one end to the other, which is a little bit concerning. I think it really comes down to the imprecise nature of the jig, and the fact that the way each blank is mounted isn't always consistent. I was able to work around the inconsistencies this build, but we'll need to address them next time. I took one suggestion and used a hard sanding block so as not to create any peaks or valleys in the dowels. I ran up the grits and ended with some hand sanding. With the dowels sanded, I cut them to their final length at the miter saw. I set up a stop and cut all four legs. Now for the mistakes. Take it away, John. After cutting the legs to their final length, I decided to do a dry fit of one of the legs just to see how they would fit. 
and it confirmed one of my fears going into this project and that fear was that I wouldn't be able to line up the hole that is in the leg here with the hole that is in the table here and I thought ahead and already bought a three-quarter of an inch plug cutter and I'm going to plug both of those holes and go a different route. That route is going to be to just glue the leg into this joint and then reinforce it with screws similar to the Maloof joint, although this does not have the rabbit feature of the Maloof joint. I'll bring you guys in a little closer to show you what happened. This is about as dead center as I could get the camera and you can see that the leg is shifted this way and that is either from the hole in this leg or the hole in the table. And I'm pretty sure that the holes in the table are the ones that are gonna give me the biggest issues because I drilled those by hand. I thought that the guide would be sufficient, but it ended up not being so. Uh, anyways, here's the plug cutter. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some face grain plugs and glue them into both of these pieces. The issue with using a dowel joint, like what I tried, is that there really is no room for error. This is a situation where a Festool domino would be very convenient. The domino can cut an oversized mortise so that there's some wiggle room when fitting the joint. For the chair, I might mimic this technique with my router and see how it goes. The leg supports were a good chance to try out an auxiliary tailstock. This new tailstock allows me to make dowels in various lengths without wasting too much material. One clamp was enough to hold it in place and I doubled up the material on this one so that it had a firmer footing on the floor of the jig. Edge profiles are always an important consideration when designing a piece of furniture. In this case, I added some concave and convex profiles to the ends using a flush trim bit and template. I also added a small chamfer to the rest of the edges, and this chamfer creates a nice contrast when paired with the dowel legs. The glue up was fairly simple, and the biggest consideration is managing glue squeeze out. There isn't much chance of cleaning up glue on this type of build, and for that reason I really limited how much glue and where I applied it. I used a quarter inch piece of MDF to create the quarter inch reveal the legs will have relative to the top. A pair of clamps was all that I needed, and I checked for square and adjusted the clamps as needed. I drilled some counter bores so that I could reinforce the joints with some screws. Each joint got a pair of number 10 three and a half inch screws. Because I'm drilling into a rounded surface, the screws essentially intersect each other, and for that reason I had to angle the screws one down and one slightly up. A thicker top would make this less stressful, but luckily all of the screws stayed where they should. The walnut plugs add a nice contrast with the cherry, and I cut them with a flush trim saw and for some reason had my finger on the top blade. Then I used the orbital sander, sanding on a very slow setting, and finally some hand sanding. I forgot to mention, but I sanded all of the parts up to 220 grit paper, including raising the grain, before the glue up. And after some final spot sanding, I could move on to the finish. I decided to use Danish oil using a wipe on, wipe off method, and I applied three coats over a few days. I'm pretty happy with the outcome of the finish, but will probably apply something more durable if I sell this piece in the future.
In woodworking, we are usually obsessed with making material flat and square, and working with round material inherently presents some challenges that I'm not used to. I'm glad I built this bench because it was simple enough that I could work out any issues before moving on to a more complex build. The bench is honestly much more sturdy than I was expecting, and I thought the legs would have a little bit of movement, but they are rock solid and I haven't felt any sway when sitting on it. This is promising, considering the next build is a chair that will see its fair share of forces. I may stick with the screws method, but I might also consider a combination of dowels and screws to reinforce the joint. We will see. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. I do my best to respond to everyone, and I appreciate the time you guys take to help me out. With that said, here are some photos of the dowel bench with a bonus at the end. Thanks for watching.